Hello and welcome to Big Dash Knows. Big Dash Knows what? New York Giants football. Let's go. Today's video is part two of the midseason grades, and today I will be going over the defensive players. Now, before we get started, I do want to say thank you to everybody tuning in, vibing with me, and subscribing to the channel. The channel is growing, and it's all because of you. So let's get into this video. Now, I'm just going to start flat out. Aziz Ojolari is not going to get a grade this time around. I don't think it's fair to him. He hasn't played enough to uh, even get a grade, so I'm going to leave him off this list completely. So go first, I'm going to start off with who gets a D. Pause. Who gets a D? Pause. Now, some of the guys on this list, as you can see, Darnay Holmes, Cordell Flott, uh, you know, Justin Lane, Austin Calitro, Quincy Roche. You know, not a lot of surprises on that level. But I do want to talk about at least two of these guys. The first guy is going to be Darnay Holmes. The reason why he gets a D, pause, is because of the expectations going into the season versus the actual production on the field during the season. In training camp, he was a workout warrior. It was like a four game or four practice stretch where he was getting the interception in all of these practices. And it was almost like, how long is the streak going to go? And then we went from that to the preseason and then now into the regular season. And the man has disappeared, in my opinion. I only speak for myself because that's all I can do. To me, he kind of disappeared. He fell off. Um, if it wasn't for injuries to flat, he's probably going to lose that spot. But that's what I want to talk about when I talk about Darnay Holmes. Now, the other guy I want to talk about at this level is Quincy Roche. Now, Quincy Roche um, going into the season. And if you guys know me, I'm a big Quincy Roche fan at the time or at the beginning of the season. I thought he might have been the third best outside linebacker outside of Aziz Ojolari and Kayvon Thibodeau. At the time, I never saw. Well, not never saw, but at the time, I didn't know Jahad Ward was the type of monster he was or is. So I thought, you know, Roche was my guy. I was riding with Roche, and I was upset that he didn't make the 53 initially. We were able to sneak him onto the practice squad. He was called up a few times, and now he's on the active 53 permanently for the rest of the season, all we think. But right now, going from where he was at last year, where he was a pivotal part in that rotation at outside linebacker to becoming a guy now that's pretty much an afterthought in Wink's system, I had to give him uh, as a grade. So I'm happy I'm done with this. Let's move to the next grade level. So the next grade level is going to be a C. And as you can see, the list is here. Again, I'm not going to go over all the names. Just talk about a few guys on this list that might surprise some or might not surprise you. So number one is going to be Tay Crowder. Now, Tay Crowder, in my opinion, has always been an overachiever. And that's not a bad thing. The man was Mr. Irrelevant. But I remember the scoop and score who kind of brought his name to my attention That scoop and score for the touchdown, you know, his first year. And then, you know, he's always been a guy that was around the ball. Sometimes he's making plays. Sometimes he's costing you some yardage. You know, it was never really consistent. Good play from Tay Crowder, but he was always good enough to be, you know, in the mentions and good enough to be involved as somebody that should be starting. Now, when this preseason started, it was all about Darian Beavers. You know, he was a steal in the sixth round. Then his production during preseason was fantastic. And then he gets the knee injury. And then, you know, we have to wait till next year to see what that's going to be. But again, Tay Crowder right now is a, is one of these middle linebackers in this rotation that we are dealing with now. Again, an overachiever in my opinion. Um, not really a, a starter for any other team, but he's a starter for us. At least what we think um, a starter would be, you know, in this rotation. So next I'm going to talk about Micah McFadden. Now he is also getting a C but he's moving up so the glass is half full with Mike McFadden I can say the glass is half empty you know with Tay Crowder like Mike McFadden had probably had his best game uh, this past game with the Seattle Seahawks now um he was able to disrupt he got his first sack he was uh, good in pass coverage you know he was good he was trusting his keys and things like that and one thing I noticed with Mike McFadden is when he trusts his eyes he's able to make plays um digest plays or sorry dissect the play and, um, you know, get to the ball pretty quickly. So I think with the more he plays, the more reps he gets, um, the more chances he gets to make plays, he gets to make plays, that um, the better he will be. And then I think once Darian Beavers is back next year, if you throw that tandem together between, you know, um, Darian Beavers and Mike McFadden, you look like you might have your two inside linebackers for years to come. Another guy I want to talk about is uh, Timon Fox, an undrafted free agent, a guy that... Um, got the stamp of approval from Lawrence Taylor 
and you never hear Lawrence Taylor talk about players. Now, he did play in North Carolina. He did break some of Lawrence Taylor's records at North Carolina. But one thing you'll recognize is even though he's a rookie, he's an older guy. You know, the COVID year affected a lot of guys coming out. A lot of people were delayed. So um, he's 24 years old already. So he's already a grown man. And he's shown that he is a grown man on the field. The man hits very, very hard. There's no doubt about that. So that's what I got to say about Timon Fox. Now, the last guy I want to talk about at the C-level is going to be Dane Belton. I gave him a C+. Dane Belton gets a C+, because even though he was, you know, a later round pick or a mid-round pick, I should say, um, he is contributing a lot to this defense. Um, and most of those three safety sets, he is that third safety on the field. And now with McKinney going down with the injury, uh, Dane Belton's probably going to get a lot more snaps. Julian Love is going in to get the green dot. Now you have Dane Belton, and this guy needs to step up. We need our secondary to step up a lot while um, McKinney is going to be out, and we don't know how long McKinney is going to be out for. But um, I like the way Wink is talking about Dane Belton. He showed that he has some confidence, and we'll see what happens You know, going into this week against the Texans. Not saying that the Texans are a game you want to overlook, but... If you want a guy to get, you know, um, some experience, try to build some confidence, I think him starting against the Texans should be a good start for him. Not saying that we're guaranteed the victory at all, but again, you would like this guy to get eased in and um, hopefully he can produce at a, at a good enough level to try to, you know, um, offset some of the loss of uh, McKinney not being available. Now, the next grade level is going to be, you know, the B level. And there's a couple of guys on this list. So I got Dory Jackson, Kayvon Thibodeau, Jahad Ward, Fabian Monroe, and um, Xavier McKinney. And then, um, yeah, and that's it for that, for the B level, I believe. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about Kayvon Thibodeau. Um, at the beginning of the year, you know, he had the injury in preseason, so he didn't play the first few games of the season. And then when he started to play, you know, he wasn't quite up to speed yet you know he was still catching on to the nfl speed still um you know growing into his own and he struggled a little bit he was able to get there almost get there a lot you know to get some pressure but he wasn't getting home as much and then as the games went on you saw him full-on bloom in that baltimore game where he was able to get his first sack but not only his first sack his first sack which also was a sack strip and um basically helped win us that game and uh, Kayvon Thibodeau, he's getting the hell like crazy. He's not getting the calls. Um, hopefully, you know, they spoke to the referee, um, uh, the referee union, you know, during the bye week, sent him some tape, letting, letting these guys know that, hey, man, this guy's getting held and he's getting held a lot. So hopefully, you know, he starts to get some of those holding calls, you know, this week, if, if they're holding them, obviously. But hopefully that he can start getting some of these calls, you know, going into the rest of the season. But right now, Kayvon Thibodeau um, is, is ascending. Um, he's getting better and you can see the talent. You can see his ability starting to show and, um, just can't wait to see what happens. Another guy is Jahad Ward. And I did a whole video about Jahad Ward cause he deserved it. Jahad Ward is the tone setter on the team. Um, every big play or every first big stops, it seems like Jahad Ward is a guy making that tackle tackles for losses, things like that. And, um, you see his energy. You see that the rest of the team feed off his energy. And that's that's the offense, too. Not only the defense is feeding off Jahad Ward. The sideline, when, when the defense is out there, the offense is, is feeding off of Jahad Ward. And you love to see it. Now, he's a guy that's on a one-year deal. Um, uh, he's a guy that I would love to bring back next year because, again, he is a tone setter. Um, he brings you that tempo. He's that tough guy that you want on the defense. He helps bring an identity of toughness to this team. So Jahad Ward is another guy that I would love to see stay on this team or get re-signed, you know, in the offseason. Uh, so next, um, I'll talk about Dory Jackson. I spoke, to, spoke about him before, too. Um, going into the season, the biggest question mark was, okay, is Dory Jackson a true CB1? And I think he's proven that he is a true CB1. And then also... The main question was, who's going to be CB2? And that goes into the next guy on the list is Fabian Moreau. Now, at first we thought it was going to be Aaron Robinson. And then, you know, Aaron Robinson goes down. And then we're able to find Fabian Moreau on the street. We are able to get him in the building, get him signed. And at first I'm like, okay, you know, kind of a journeyman, a um, little, little bit older. What's he going to bring to the table? And boy, I was pleasantly surprised with Fabian Moreau. Not only is he playing good on the Giants, he's also getting recognition, you know, league-wide. He's a top 10 cornerback right now, and I'm amazed by it because, again, we signed a guy, he didn't have a home, off the streets, and he's in the Giants um, system now, and he's making plays. And 
he's almost not saying he's a shutdown corner but for what we're paying this guy and where he was when we signed him is absolutely a steal good job from um joe shane good job by um brandon brown these guys know how to pick some players especially when you're dealing with a cap that's in the deficit for the most part or at least when you're when you're dealing with broken your bargain shopping these guys do it the best now i'm gonna go ahead and talk about the guys that got a a as far as a mid-season grade and it's only two guys on this list and you see the names now first name is going to be dexter lawrence who in my opinion is a all pro or playing at an all pro level and he keep, and if he keeps it up he will absolutely be an all pro at the end of the year the second guy is going to be julian love who is the biggest surprise in my opinion on this team because uh, and I said it before, when we drafted Dane Belton, I thought we drafted Julian Love's replacement. You know, Julian Love coming up on a contract year, and you let him walk, save some money, and then you have Dane Belton, you know, um, coming up behind him. But no, plans have changed. Julian Love wasn't having any of it, and now he's looking like one of the top players on the team. To me, it's Dexter Lawrence, and then it's Julian Love, and sometimes... I'm thinking it's Julian Love over Dexter Lawrence. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm still going to put Julian Love over Dexter Lawrence. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. So, yeah. So, Julian Love, <clears throat> again, I was pleasantly surprised at the depth within his skill set because we knew coming out of college he was a cornerback, but we moved him to safety. He also had ability to play nickel. So he's taking all that experience and versatility and bringing it to the safety spot. And I don't know what Wink did, but... He got the key. He unlocked the ability with uh, with Julian Love, and now this guy's making plays all over the field. He's he's batting balls, balls. He's getting um, interceptions, tackles for losses. He got a sack on the quarterback. The man is all over the place, leading the team in tackles. You know, so Julian Love is having a fantastic year. He's getting an A from me. And now back to Dexter Lawrence. When we drafted Dexter Lawrence, we thought he was going to be a nose tackle, but no, they had him uh, in the three four. They had him lined up at end everybody or a lot of people believed he was playing out of position so we did two years of that and then finally um you know we get wink martindale and he moves dexter lawrence to nose tackle and voila look what happens everything we thought it was going to be when we picked him in the first round with the 17th pick is now coming to fruition now this dexter lawrence he's still the same happy guy celebrating with the dance that he does but also he shows that he's an absolute monster you know to the offensive line whether he's lined up directly on the nose or in that gap this man is hard to block for anybody he is a hard piece of work for anybody long day at the job for offensive linemen this man is leading our team with sacks i believe he has four sacks now and he and for a nose tackle to have that kind of pressure get that kind of pressure on the quarterback it's fantastic so um dexter lawrence you get an a from me and um that's going to wrap up my grades you know you know, for the mid-season point. So I want to thank you guys for vibing with me. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And from one Giants fan to another, this is Big Dash Knows, Big Blue Nation. Let's go.